Hi, I'm Patrick. And I'm Liv. And this is the Maki -E GT vlog. <laughs> <laughs> so we just picked up our new Maki -E GT Performance Edition yesterday, and we're going to introduce you to this brand new car in this video. And tell you what we're going to call it. So let's go. Like Patrick said, we literally picked this up last night after work. Well, uh, basically. <laughs> it was during been, work, but during, we had to go to work. During work, and then we went back to work. So we haven't really gotten to drive it much. Today, we are going to take this beautiful GT, whose name is? I think we are going with Lucifer Tucifer. <laughs> we synchronized. That's so funny. <laughs> um, and uh, someone else just said today, uh, Ducifer, which I think is really funny. And we got. But it sounds a little poopy, so I don't know. Lucifer Pro, Lucifer 2.0. Um, uh, electric Bluegaloo. That yeah. was really cute. Um, and then, uh, yeah, there, there are a lot of suggestions. We'll put some of them down below. If you guys want to override us, you can, but we're not calling it. Maki McMock face or something oh, like the, that. Oh, the thing you know, after that boat, Bodie McBoat face, Maki Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It's kind of cute though. But I think Lucifer Tucifer is pretty good. Depending on, do we call it Lucifer in the future or Tucifer? And if you don't know, um, you know, you probably do know. But anyways, we had a Maki uh, first edition that we just traded in for this. We called that one Blucifer after the horse that's at DIA. We'll put a link below. We are below. in Colorado. If this is your first time seeing us, it's probably a confusing video. <laughs> yeah, it's probably confusing. But we traded in the first edition, but we want to like introduce you to the GT and why we're excited that we were able to upgrade and like some of the things we're looking forward to and just some of the cool features that are inherent to the Mach-E, as well as the ones that are special for the GT, and then the ones that are special for the GT Performance Edition, like these seats that wrap around, <laughs> so. And we do have a video out uh, on saying farewell to our first edition, so you can check it out. It is not a bad vehicle, it is phenomenal, so you won't be sad if you pick that up. And we have another video that'll be about uh, the whole process of selling a Maki -E and doing the uh, transition upgrade and why we did that and why the numbers worked out. So we'll, we'll, we'll try to keep this one a little bit shorter yeah. and just introducing you to the GT Performance Edition. Yeah. So keep an eye out for that video because we're not rich people who just went and bought another car. We made this work. But today, like Patrick said, we're going to enjoy this GT. Our old gym is actually having like a barbecue in Cherry Creek State Park, which is nearby. We've driven in there before with vehicles. It's really beautiful. We're going to take you along for the ride and get some good footage of this car and introduce you to Blucifer Tucifer. You didn't say it together. Oh, sorry. I was just watching because I was like, <laughs> I'm excited to go. OK, so let's go. <laughs> So we got an Apple map pen, whatever, from our gym. And Patrick just pulled that up and it is now navigating to there. And you're wearing sweet Maki glasses. <clears throat> <laughs> That's pretty cool. Very. Yeah. I'm really liking the split screen. Yeah, it's coming to Android Auto at some point, but it's in CarPlay right now. And I forgot. It will expand now with CarPlay, and that should be coming to Android Auto as well. But normally, that was as much as you could get for CarPlay, but now with newer software updates on the mach -E, you can expand. And there's supposedly a Dunkin' Donuts app that works in CarPlay. Oh yeah, we're gonna have, have to, to test, test that out. <laughs> Hi, day pass. Hello. 
They pass. Yes, sir. Take a slight right turn, then turn left. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. We've got to pay for us. All right. Thanks so much. Have a good day. Onward. Turn left. Okie dokie. Mm -hmm. Oh, and this is good. We get to go on the road that's bumpy <gasps> and annoying. Yes, the terrible bumpy road. I'm really liking Apple Maps. I am annoyed that that map link would only work in iPhone. It's so dumb. It is really dumb and frustrating, but this is looking nice and I'm turn glad left. that's coming to you. Chill Android out, Auto. Interrupted I need to us. Turn off the voice stuff. Though. I like voice stuff though. I'll take it over there. Now, we last did this in the Mercedes EQS. 2.8 miles, turn right. I got to write about that for a girl's guide to cars and they gave it to us for a week. So we came in here and did this notoriously bumpy road with it. So that's fresh in our minds. So now we're comparing this to the EQS. Huh? It, it's worse on a bicycle, but these, so every single one of these is like a joint in the pavement and it's like, do dunk, do dunk. This is very not bad. Yeah, this is nice. Extremely nice. I think this is where Magna Ride really helps on with normal driving. Yeah. like. We went over that crazy drainage ditch that we always do, which was quite severe and didn't notice that much of a difference. But this is significant. Like you can hear it, but you don't feel it. Yeah. That's like hardly at all. No, I, like I would forget that this was the bad road. Because you start to dread it. It's so routine, this bump, 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 bump. And most of our bad memories are on a bicycle with yeah. no suspension. So. It hurts so much. <laughs> Should we do some electric biking videos? That could be fun. That if people really are fun. interested, we'll do it. Anyone interested in some electric biking videos will take the Maki to Moab and go bike out there. Hint, hint. I've been wanting to do yeah. that for a while. <laughs> Liv, Liv has an electric assist on her recumbent trike. I don't have an electric assist, but electric if I have to get gas. one, Oh, I guess. <laughs> Would you like one? Uh, I sort of want to hold off, but I could see, you know, it's it would be nice for just cruising around and not having to worry about um, getting super fatigued. Like if we wanted to bike 15 miles to go meet somebody for coffee or something like that, I don't have to worry about like, well, now I'm hot and sweaty and all of that. Yeah. I think in a lot of ways, so we got the electric assist on my trike because uh, it's quite heavy and smaller wheels and I'm just slow. So I was much slower than Patrick. So it sort of evened things out. But if you have an electric assist on an electric bike, then I'm going to need something super powered to keep up with you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can't remember if it's in this video or if it's in another video, um, mm -hmm. but we went over this notorious drainage ditch that's near our house that we've taken a lot of cars over because it sort of like articulates each wheel separately so you can feel how the suspension is and it was good but it wasn't that were you doing intelligent cruise control yeah i wanted to see how much it would handle like a curve like this very it curvy <laughs> very cur it did not uh so the drainage ditch uh the first edition maki and this gt performance edition this was definitely better, but it wasn't like, whoa. But now in this safe park with these bumpy roads, we are going over significant bumps and I'm holding the GoPro with one hand. And now we're bouncing around. We're bouncing around, but it's not bad. It's not bad at all. Well, it, I think it's helping a lot with like the cracks and the potholes and the those type of things when they literally like patch the pavement and it's like a big hump or whatever. In half a mile, turn right. Okay. <laughs> I like when it talks to me. I don't want to look at the screen. <laughs> I think this is extremely noticeable. I hope there's a bathroom. I'm Otherwise, sure. we're going to go to the bathroom and then go to the park. Uh, the is picnic. this going to go on the video? Yeah, I don't care. <laughs> the things you worry about. Well, I mean, honestly, you guys have seen our road trip videos. We need the bathroom before the car needs anything. Mm-hmm. Hula hoops, beach towels. Cameras. <laughs> That's what you bring to the beach, right? That is what you bring to the beach. We're just going to go hang out with them. Uh, we definitely want to go play with the car, so we're not going to get uh, too slushy. I see the sign this way. Oh, okay. We got to go find them. Hey, get strong, make friends. Okay. Hey. Very Thank you.
I'm gonna document how windy it is. It is so windy. It is very, it's very windy. We might have to hide. Yeah, like, yeah. Right. Like, I'm surprised your hat's still up. We're two, we'll have thunderstorms. What time is it now? 121. 121. Yeah. So that's, I say just run. Go for it. Yeah. So a storms are coming and of course the gym coach is out on the water. Actually it looks kind of fun though. He's got really good balance. I do want to see him wipe out though. Wouldn't that be fun? <laughs> yeah. Okay, we got chased away because everything's sort of blown around and stuff. Storms are coming. Storms are coming. You probably can't hear this, but we were going to go film with Lucifer Tucifer, but instead we're going to go hide because Colorado's a little prone to hail. We don't want that. Yeah. We're a little new car scared, so we'll go hide and maybe come back after the storm. We'll see. Yeah. Hello, Lucifer Tucifer. Hello. I like these wheels. I really, really do too. It's funny we don't get a cross traffic alert. Hey, yeah, I'm surprised that didn't trigger. But the camera's useful though. Yeah. We should test what size thing triggers a cross traffic alert. Yeah, I thought before we've gotten some pedestrians. You actually, it. Yeah, because it did it when I did it. We had to run away from the storm. We are making our way out of Cherry Creek State Park right now so that those clouds don't hmm. tumble upon us. Uh, but this is a great time to talk about the ride quality and one of the big reasons why we decided to make the switch from our basically premium to this GT Performance Edition. Yeah, the Magna Ride is only available in the Performance Edition. If we could have gotten a premium with a Magna Ride, that might have been an excellent choice for us. Uh, but I don't mind the extra power of the GT mm -hmm. Performance Edition by any means. We, we really can tell a marked difference with the right quality on just a little bit of rough roads. And maybe tomorrow or the next day we'll test it on some twisty roads. Yeah, and if you guys have watched that video that we did at the EV Media Summit with Out of Spec Studios, they put that on at the end of last year. And we got to drive the GT and the GT Performance Edition, experience the difference in what that felt like on Los Angeles roads, but that was a good seven, eight months ago, right? Yeah, it was yeah. December 4th or so. Yeah, so we haven't been in another GT, actually we did. Uh, a on really, Earth Day. Yeah, on Earth Day, a really generous friend let us uh, drive patron. his around, patron. Thank you, Eric. Uh, so he let us drive his around but other than that, we haven't really been in one, so we haven't been able to take it on bumpy roads or familiar Colorado roads or anything like that. So I, I feel like this is a great decision. You can immediately tell how good the suspension is. Yeah, and the, you know, I, I think they went with Magna Ride for the performance benefits, uh, but for the comfort benefits, it's there as well. And I really am excited to try it out for the performance benefits at some point. But that sort of goes back to the reality of the way most people, you know, use their cars is you might get that car that is great for, you know, the weekend fun drives. But most of the time you're driving it around on city streets and you're dealing with that type of traffic and roads. And uh, this car does that nicely as well including you know some of the intelligent cruise control and whatnot like i can use that you know on a daily commute if we had one um and on city streets and uh you know it still g get the benefit of that and of course the suspension feels really good on on these type of roads as well and to be totally honest we would not necessarily have done this if it wasn't for youtube if it wasn't for the interest that you guys have expressed in this and if it wasn't for the crazy car market that allowed us to do this without having significant changes in costs uh, there will be a video i think patrick mentioned that there'll be a video coming out about that we'll tell you all about the experience uh, so if that's something that you want to do if you want to get into a gt performance edition if you can or if you're just interested we'll share about it because this is a really, really strange to use car market now, isn't it? Very like, strange. We, yeah. we basically made money selling our car after driving it for 15 months. Which helped us put that money into this, 
which we're excited about. It sounds like you guys are excited about it too, about all the good things that this car brings. And I'm trying to remember, is it 480 horsepower? 480 horsepower, 600, 638, 34, 34 pound foot of torque, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, which is a very big difference to our first edition. We have a lot planned. We're going to test everything about this. We're going to put it through its, its paces. If there's anything that you guys want to see, we're excited to show that because now we have everything that our beautiful first edition had plus more. Yeah, and what do you guys want us to test? I mean, we're we're not the ones that normally do the like zero to hundred percent charge test or the hundred percent range test, but we do plan on you know taking it on familiar roads, seeing how it feels on twisty roads, seeing how it feels uh, on long drives, testing out Blue Cruise in traffic on mountain roads or mountain freeway. So we're gonna try those type of things. Is there anything that you want us to do with this car? We do want to take some road trips and we've gone to San Diego a couple of times and, or San Diego, Vegas. That's uh, where Liv's, some of Liv's family lives. So that's obviously why we want to go that direction. But we would love to go other places. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to try to hit some places up in Colorado. But if you have any suggestions or ideas for where we could go on a longer road trip or to do like a massive Maki meetup or something like that. Oh, that would be so fun. Yeah, we're we're sort of open. You know, we got to fit it in with our our normal day jobs, uh, Monday through Friday. You know, we're eight trying to, to five. figure all this out. Yeah. Yeah. So one of the things we thought is like maybe we'll do like an East Coast swing and travel on Saturday and Sunday, and then work during the week. Pop up somewhere. somewhere. Yeah, because yeah. we can work from anywhere, uh, but we have to be at a, a Wi-Fi or internet place Monday through Friday. So we could do that, like yeah. head to the East Coast and um, still, you know, if we can do it, we got to find a way to do it cheaply. Economically, yeah. <laughs> but we're also planning on redoing some trips that we did in Blucifer 1, original Blucifer, just like Blucifer, and this is Tucifer for now to distinguish. We'll see what happens in the future. But we're going to redo some trips that we took in Blucifer see if anything feels different see how the charging is see how the range is how it performs will like on these familiar trips that we've shot footage in hopefully we'll be able to see a, a good comparison yeah i'm very curious about some of the stretches between like here in vegas uh, with the range being slightly less on the performance edition 260 versus 270 miles Will that feel like a significant difference Yeah. or will it not really matter? Because we're not the type that charges to 100% and goes all the way down to 2%. So will it will it not matter if we are going, you know, 80% down to 10%? Um, it, it might not make a difference in our time. Um, will it affect our, our, our anxiety? Will we have more anxiety? I mean, I don't feel like 10 miles will make much of a difference, but I honestly don't know. So we'll have to see. Yeah. I'm I'm interested. You guys will have to let us know if you're interested in that at all. And I'm curious, can we eke out some good efficiency driving at a like in whisper mode and chilling mm. out and not mashing on the, the gas pedal? Not that whisper mode gets you your uh, range, but I think it sort of for me, it shifts my mentality so that when I get on an on ramp, I don't floor it. Uh, I go a little bit more gentle and it gets we'll me in that see mindset. if he keeps up with that. Oh, oh. <laughs> so we're passing a Sinclair's, by the way. I don't know if you'll see that little dinosaur there. So I shot a little video with Out of Spec Studios. We went and rescued a dog, me and Alyssa. It was so fun. And I went to Nebraska for the first time ever when I was there. And there was a Sinclair's that had a dinosaur that had like a a saddle. A saddle and a harness and everything on, like it was ready to be ridden. Uh, is that a thing? Like decorating the Sinclair's dinosaur? I don't know. Do they do that in your state? Um, like is there a Californian Sinclair's with a surfboard on it or something like that? I think that's very cute, if so. Another question. We have been thinking for ages, what can we do like what Jeep does? If you don't know Jeep, people, Jeep, uh, the Jeep Jeepers. community, Jeepers, what do we call them? Jeepers. They have duckies. 
So sometimes Jeepers who, <laughs> who have a nice Jeep or a customized Jeep or whatever, they'll come up to the car and they'll find a ducky there. And that means someone liked their Jeep and left them a ducky. My sister has a Jeep. She told me about this. It's really cute. We've been thinking, what could we do with the Maki? Uh, and then someone actually just started this thread on Maki forums as well. So other people are thinking about this. What do you guys think? I, I don't know. Like, do we do My Little Ponies? Do we do Tiny Little Horse figurines? Do we do magnets? Should we do origami? Um, what? They have the Matchbox or Hot Wheel. I can't remember. The Hot Wheel. Maki 1400. Uh, and I've seen a couple people get those on their oh, windshield, right, right, right. Yeah. but they're hard to get. You can't just order them in bulk. And they're pricey and you don't necessarily just want to yeah. put them on every car. And you want something you customize, right? Something quirky. Yeah. I think My Little Pony, but that's expensive too. What if we bulk buy My Little Pony and then like draw things on them? So I they're really, know. I don't know. You guys need to help us. What do we do? What should we do? Eh? Any ideas? Put them down below. I really like that there is a power meter. I wish it were bigger, but that's acceleration. And then green is region. And there's not showing any now, but it'll put some like gray bars on the top end of the power meter if it's limiting power for any reason, like it's too hot, like after you just did a DC fast charge, or if you do a bunch of accelerations in, in a row, it'll put some gray bars up there to let you know there's it's limiting power to keep the battery and other systems safe, but I like the power meter. From this angle, you can tell that anything's different, but look at that schnoz. I didn't think that I would like this so much. Like I thought I would really miss the full blue, but it's yeah. really, really nice. And the, the effect on this is actually interesting. It's like a layer of plastic over a sort of textured uh, gray, metallic gray, black thing. And then of course the pony up front is different. I can't wait to see this at night lit up. We saw it a little bit yesterday, like in the garage and whatnot, but I'm excited by that. Um, and it doesn't look, you know, people just focus on that the grill is different, but if you go down low, there are some differences. It has this like front splitter spoiler on the front uh, that sticks out a little bit. I'm actually a little worried, like will we have more uh, worries about uh, scraping when we come out of some places that have a dip. And then of course, one of the things I, I sort of really like is it has these sort of ventilated things. You, I can't fit my finger through there, but there's you, air can actually pass through here and that's to help the aerodynamics of the car. But I love the overall look. There's no like blue down here. So it's sort of just focused here. We are supposed to have a front license plate. We haven't decided, are we gonna put it on? Um, are we gonna stay illegal? Or are we gonna get like a, uh, a sticker or something that's not actually illegal here in Colorado? or some other way of uh, temporarily mounting the plate, um, but being able to take it off while we're filming. So, but otherwise looks very familiar in the front. If you didn't know, this does light up on the GTs. Like Patrick said, can't wait to see this at night. There is a, was it a Kickstarter or was it just a self funded? Kickstarter or Indiegogo or? We'll, on, we'll, we'll link it if we can find it, but someone has created a kit for that. Um, I'm, I think there's even a video on like how to install it or whatever. So if you want one of these and you're daring, go check that out. That's pretty sweet. And uh, I think uh, this is one of the things that I'm most excited about, except I did not realize that we have a power frunk. How exciting is that? That is super cool. I'm not sure if it's on the app. I don't think so, but yeah. it isn't within the car power front release. Yeah, we have to figure out all the different ways that we can open that, but that's a super cool feature that I know a lot of people wanted. So we have that now, I'm really psyched. Patrick was talking about the aesthetics, not just the differences in the black here, but if you can see, there's so many lines that draw your attention to this schnaz in the front, which I love. We have the lines of the headlights and we have the lines of this air vent here and everything is very directional and beautiful and just well tailored and the curvature of the hood. Like I just, I guess because it wasn't our car, I didn't spend that much time looking at these, but now that it is, it's like, Dang, they did a good job. What do you guys think? Do you miss the blue? Do you like this? Because I, I really, really like this. I love this like aggressive forward push. 
And that might also be affected by the black mirrors. So everything about the car is a little more streamlined, a little more pushed forward. And then of course we have the wheels. I really like these. I really like the wheels. <laughs> the red brake calipers were the same on our first edition, uh, except now it says Brembo. So Brembo is like one of the biggest brake manufacturers in the world. Uh, but I love these. It looks like to me, this, I didn't notice this until I think it was the Denver Auto Show last year, but it's, it's sort of like a throwing star here in the middle. Um, but overall, I, I love this pattern here. Now, uh, I don't know what we're going to do because these are summer tires and we live in Colorado and you think we have a ton of time because it's uh, almost August. But uh, you think like, yeah, you have a, a while till winter, but we have occasionally had snowstorms in September. I think uh, last year or the year before we had a snowstorm right after Labor Day. So we got to figure out what we're going to do with the summer tires. Are we going to swap wheels and tires or are we just going to switch to all seasons? Or? All season, for sure. We are not having tires lying around anymore. <laughs> if you guys have a recommendation for your favorite tires or something like that, you will have to let us know. Yeah, but these, these are fantastic summer tires. We're going to go, you know, use them for August at least and then maybe we'll swap over. But we got to figure that out and... Uh, uh, what I'd love to do, uh, I, don't, I don't think Martian Wheels listens to us on, on YouTube, but they're good friends with Out of Spec Studios, and they focus 100% on Tesla, but I think they should do some Mach-E wheels, and we would love to work with them to find something really cool, a really good design. They make great wheels that are performance-oriented, very lightweight, so they help with your range, and they look fantastic. So that would be cool. Um, if you guys do know Drew from Martian Wheels, let him know that we want some wheels. I want to try to send him a message and see if he responds. But um, otherwise, yeah, everything looks very familiar. Some mach depending on what trim level, they have the black mirrors. The GT has the black mirrors. Uh, the first edition had the blue mirrors or body color. But otherwise, this, this everything looks exactly the same uh, compared to the first edition, including the wheel arches. The different wheel arches on the Mach-E is like you have the, the body color like this. You have the shiny black or piano black like on the premiums and then on the selects it's a like a, a matte black. Uh, and I forget the California Route 1. I'm, my mind is slipping. You guys let me know. I'm sure you will. Uh, love the wheels again. The back looks almost identical except for two things one of course we have the gt badge i sort of miss the pony badge and i don't mind you know uh, if it would have had the pony i don't need it advertised that it's a gt i know it's a gt that's all that really matters but uh i do miss the the pony but gt is it's cool and then down here it's you can't really tell until you get down low but it's it's uh like a diffuser back here basically like some fins that extend down. That's uh, different. So very uh, interesting to see that they added a little subtle feature here on the GT. So otherwise, that's it on the exterior. Should we take a look inside? Yeah. By the way, one of the things on the inside is that the animation is different for the GT Performance Edition. It has a little bit more of a gold. And then that part there, it's actually a GT front versus a select front so subtle difference and it extends over here to the driver screen as well i i didn't realize that and maybe it had that when we were in la but i didn't notice it until you know turning it on and off here a couple of times likewise you can tell how new this car is because I haven't even taken out this tab and there's some plastic <laughs> along the glove box. It just, it feels new. Like I'm that kind of person that leaves the screen on my phone for a while for it to feel brand new. But it's not just the tab that makes this feel new. This entire interior has different finishes, which is really cool. So we go from the vegan leather interior of our first edition that had the beautiful grabber blue stitching, which I really miss. And here we just have a lighter tone gray stitching on this kind of micro suede sort of thing that's a slightly different to the suede on the doors. Very soft though, very plush, very gray interior. And then we have these loud cars, <laughs> loud bikes, dirt bike. <laughs> dirt bike. He's having a good time. And then we have this aluminum insert here with this really cool pattern. So that is a new thing and a very busy detail that's quite cool looking and sort of adds to the, I don't know, the fun GT sort of aggressive, more stylish interior. Even if you look down here, 
Even this texture is slightly different. And it's angled. There's like a little divider down here now. Yeah. So we have a couple more textures and finishes in the interior that are really cool. And one of them is our GT is stamped into this, what was previously just blank. Looking at the seat, we have another duplication of the same pattern that's on the dash, but it's etched into this beautiful suede seat. And then they call this reflective Miko inserts. I'm not sure what that is, but it's really cool looking. And hopefully you can see that it's, it's kind of got trademarked. that. <laughs> it's trademarked. There you go. Now, I actually have a friend whose name is Miko. So I know that that means, I think, sorceress in Japanese. Uh, so I'm, I'm not sure if it's like some kind of sorcery that they're doing, but I think it looks pretty cool. And of course, we have extremely bolstered seats here. Side bolstering, shoulder bolstering, very aggressive and cool looking hard seat back here. Patrick was trying to scooch around and it really holds you in the seat. Like you are firmly facing forward in a very different way to our first edition. I don't mind it, I really like it, but it is firmer. And we noticed, both of us, that the base of the seat is also firmer. So it'll be really interesting to see how this is on like a four hour long commute, long road trip sort of thing, or an eight hour road trip altogether. How do we feel our legs extra wiggly? And I complained about some other cars that didn't have adjustable headrest. And this is not an adjustable headrest. So oh, goodness. That it was, isn't. Yeah, that was a little bit of a negative for me is that it doesn't have an adjustable headrest. Um, it's in a good location for me, but, uh, you know, that's that's something to me I think should be adjustable. Um, the other thing that we're missing that's on the center console as well as the seats is uh, we don't have the grabber blue stitching anymore or blue stitching. Mm -hmm. uh, but the silver gray looks really nice. It does. It's very elegant. And there's a lot of that aesthetic that we've seen in the aluminum and the dash and that's repeated in the subtle elements of the suede here that you can see in the rest of the vehicle. We'll show you the back as well. But like Patrick said, I agree this the seat height should definitely be adjustable. You can adjust the rear seats, as you can see in the back. The headrest. Yeah. You can adjust the headrest in the back, as you can see. So you really should be able to adjust these. So if you are a taller person than us, 5'6 five, and 5'5, five, five, how do you feel or with this? Or if you're this? short. Or if you're shorter than you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How do you feel with this? Is this comfortable for you? It is. Now, and, and I did notice when we were just going over to the park, like I, um, just turning my head, like the headrest is brushing uh, the back of my head a little bit. So I thought that was like, a, it was like an odd feeling and I would uh, I would normally like adjust that backwards a little bit, but you can't do that. So uh, the only way I can really do that is sort of to lean back a little bit and then now my head's forward some. So um, that really so far, that's like the only negative that I've like come across is like the headrests aren't adjustable. And I know some people don't like the shoulder bolstering or the side bolstering. It might be a little bit, too snug and it's not like a, adjustable. So if you are considering a GT Performance Edition, if I were you, I would try to test one out and see if you can, you know, see how well you fit in this before you, you know, commit to that. And the GT actually has different seats and the premiums and selects have different seats in the California Route 1. So it could, you know, you may have to make your choice based on which seat is your favorite, but uh, these, I think, are super comfortable for us. They're a little bit firmer, which I don't mind a firmer seat. So we just need to test it out on like a 10-hour road trip somewhere to see how it holds up after five, six, seven hours of driving. So we'll see. And looking back at the back again, it almost seems like I intentionally brought this hula hoop because it really sort of fits the aesthetic. My The pattern on my hula hoop, as you can see, is somewhat echoed. I hope you can see. If not, we're going to throw over some B-roll. But you can see that Miko insert again, the really cool sort of flutter of reflection of light. Like, there's not really any reason to have a reflective seat um, other than a cool aesthetic, which I do like. And then the same texture that we see on the, the aluminum insert and the dash is present here in the seating. It's, it's very cool. It's very cohesive. And it is subtly a little different. Yeah, and I'm missing the blue stitching on the steering wheel. Although I sort of thinking thinking about it, 
with the blue stitching, first of all, it was so limited that I was worried about like what happens if we need to replace a seat or the steering wheel, um, or if it gets dirty, like how are you going to deal with that? And, but e even if it's like this silver gray, if it gets dirty, it's like, it's, I think it blends in a bit better than if it were just blue. So that's sort of an advantage, but I really like the feel of the microfiber suede, like on the, the door panel. It feels very, very nice. Um, and everything else, of course, is the vegan leather. Um, I, I really like the Maki interior of all versions select on up and the GT just puts it up one more notch. So very, very, very happy, but it does still feel very similar to our premium slash first edition looking out. It has like the same blue hood. So as we were driving around, it felt like we were just in the, the, the first edition, not the super powerful GT performance edition. Uh, but touch the accelerator pedal and you all of a sudden feel that. And of course, as we keep mentioning over and over the ride quality feels significantly different, but interior wise, it's just subtle little differences that really boost this. And that similarity, the fact that this feels very much like our first edition or a premium is great because we like this. Like we really like the interior genuinely. I'm thrilled. You guys, if you've watched this much, you know, I have a thing about the side by side cup holders. These are great. The uh, grippy portion of the cup holder is very expansive and accepts a lot of different bottle sizes. Obviously, this is tiny, but I really enjoy the way that this functions. Some vehicles have really uh, weird adjustable ones or ones that are too grabby or, or won't accept a big bottle. So that's very cool. And of course, the fact that I can reach into this cubby here without disturbing Patrick. We can close it and make it look nice and neat. Wow, it's, it's actually very cool in here. It's a very hot day, so I <laughs> want to stick my hand in there. Added bonus, your, your center cubby is an air conditioning. So everything that I really like about the cabin is the same, and I'm psyched about that. So how is it going on the highway? There's a bit too much traffic to really enjoy it today, but we had the like traffic metering light. So when it turned green, I could just floor it and have a little bit of fun. It felt like really good. You can feel the, the speed difference. You can actually hear the front motor a bit more than with the uh, premium edition. Sorry, my phone is buzzing. Uh, so if it, it, that part is cool. The suspension on the freeway is excellent. We are going on a, like flyover ramp from one freeway to the other. That's normally a little bit bouncy and noisy. Uh, and of course you have like lateral acceleration. Felt very smooth and controlled. I appreciated that a lot. We need to do some more testing. We've only done like 30 miles in the car. So this is just our intro video. We have a lot more that we can explore. We have a lot more that we can test out and we have a lot more adventures. And we hope you guys join us if you're not subscribed. Join us. We're going to have a lot of uh, Maki, Maki GT uh, uh, videos and experiences. And we really want you guys to come along with us. And if you have questions, if you have videos that you want us to make, just let us know because we sometimes run out of ideas ourselves and we want to just, you know, make stuff that you guys want to watch. Makes it better for us, makes it better for you. You're not bored. And if you have any ideas, drop them in the comments or shoot us an email via you know, whatever it's down in the YouTube thing or Patrick and live at Maki vlog.com. I remembered it. Mm -hmm. So there, there's all sorts of ways to get a con in contact with this. We also invite you guys to follow us. We're on Twitter and Instagram. We're at mock e.org, mock e.org. So we're on a lot of platforms. You can connect with us, follow our adventures and see where we're going with this thing. Well, we decided to come to one of our favorite areas, you know, that place with the wings over the Rockies and the B-52 and everything because there are a bunch of roundabouts. Well, how was that? <laughs> that is so much fun. And we've taken several cars through here. And years ago, I had uh, a test drive of a Miata and that was probably the most fun car coming through here with the roundabouts. But the Mach-E GT Performance Edition, this car 
feels fantastic going through these roundabouts. We're going through it calm now, but we had a little bit of fun just a few minutes ago. It, it's so cool because it like you can feel the suspension and the all wheel drive like adapting and like really getting a lot of power down and also keeping the car stable going through the roundabout. Uh, we drove a Tesla Model Y performance here and I remember like thinking it felt like it had a low center of gravity until I did the roundabout. And then when we did the roundabout, it felt like it was a little uh, top heavy mini vanish feeling. But in the Mach E GT Performance Edition, Boosifer, Tucifer, it, it felt very, very sporty, like a sports car going through that. The body roll wasn't there. And then that last one that I just did, um, coming out of it, the road was a little bit rough and you could just feel like the car was like super quickly adapting and putting down the power to the wheels and getting us out of the corner with not quite full power, but a lot of power going into it. And actually the last vehicle that we were here with was the Rivian, the same Rivian that we took to Aspen and we went up Independence Pass and I got thrown around a bit because the bolstering is quite loose and it's such a high vehicle and I was thinking and I said in that video that the Mach-E GT Performance Edition would be the ultimate combination of more power but more um, bolstering and lower to the ground and everything. That just proved it true Very for much. sure with the, the immediate comparison of having been in the Rivian and then switching to this it had way more power. I like to lean forward and get the hood of the car with my phone and then I'll film it as Patrick's doing stuff and I kept trying to do it and then he'd gun it and I just went, whoa, like yeah. right back into the seat, but not in a sickening way, definitely in a powerful way though, that I had no choice. I was going back in the seats, but it was cushioned. I wasn't getting thrown around, but you could feel the power. Yeah. Good combo and good contrast, huh? Yeah, and I do remember going around the roundabouts in the Rivian. That felt, even though it has low center of gravity comparatively, the lowest setting, and I think we had it on that, was nine and a half inches uh, in ride height. So the Mach-E is way lower than that. Um, and it has not air suspension like the Rivian, it has the Magna Ride. The Magna Ride really, I think, helps it in those those cornering situations. By the way, there's an E-Nero right behind us. Cool! I probably can't see it with the GoPro. Should I get an E-Nero? Should I? Should I? Stay hula hoop. What should my EV be to replace my gas car? Please vote down below. They're voting right now. Like Patrick said, please join us for this adventure because it's not just about following us, it's about this community. Like we are truly enjoying this community with you guys and us getting into this GT Performance Edition. We're excited to share about this with you if you have interests or questions. And we want to celebrate your enjoyment of, of your mach -E too. So if you want to join us on any of the social media platforms, we want to see what you're doing and what fun you're having because this is a whole new world. This is our first, technically this is our second electric vehicle, <gasps> but like this is our first foray, foray into the electric world. And it, you don't have to, you know, we don't want just Mach E people. We want all EVs. Yeah. So we're interested in hearing like, what other EVs do you have? If you don't have a Mach E, let us know what EV you do have. If you don't have any EV, let us know what EVs you're interested in. Basically, it's, this is the EV community. It's a weird thing. We're only approaching 5% adoption in the US, but it's still a big, scary journey. It's intimidating. It's completely different to anything that we've done before like our dependence on gas and all that, we're used to this. We know what filling up is. So that's part of the experience that we want to share with you guys. And we love it. If you're driving an ID4, yes, Tesla, whatever. It's cool. It's great. We're all in this together. So thank you so much for joining us for this video, introducing our new electric car. Can't believe it. Our second Number electric two, car. Blue Sapphire 2. So were we trying to say that together? No. <laughs> okay. It's very hot. That happened once and it was spontaneous. It'll never happen again. It was actually spontaneous. Now I'm just looking at you like, oh, what are you saying? Please stop. <laughs> Please stop talking. It's very hot. We're going to go, but thank you so much for helping us introduce Blucifer to Lucifer. Let us know what you think of the name, what you want to see, whatever. A big, big thank you to our patrons, Frankie M. Andy Ross. Marlene Strickland. Michael Bazaruski. Larry Kuhn. Eric Lineman. Joshua Eng. 
Lester Marlet. <laughs> Bill Greentree. Murchi Batista. And Alain Matsunasi. And of course, our engaged patrons, Todd Mason. Midlife Marine. And Lewis McFarlane. And our Whisper patrons, we appreciate you too. I just realized that we wrote engaged patrons, but the GT says engage. It always said engage. Did it always say engage? Yeah. It doesn't I, say engage. I just engage. think it should be engaged. Because I don't you're know. engaged. Are you guys engaged? If you are, engaged. please give this video a engaged. like. Engaged. Engaged. <laughs> it's engaged. Mess with it. Are you engaged? Yeah. Well, it, it's sort of like, and I got to say, like the <laughs> front button on the screen. Like, did we have that? And I just never noticed because. No. Like, I, we didn't no. have that? Are you no. Sure? Well, we would have known from other people, too. They'd be like, why know. are you pulling the stupid thingy? Is the stupid thing, the pulley thing It's is still there. there. And I, like, I'd rather just do that, like open the car and do that versus. Well, the button's quite buried. It in the screen. So, yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. Anyways, I, <laughs> see, you know how it is. Like you get a car and then you like, you get to know it the first weekend. And after that, you just drive it. So anything you don't get to know the first weekend, you may not ever learn. I don't know. Anyways, I think this means we should go. We should go. Anyways, it's clearly time to go. I don't know if you can tell, but we are melting. So we're going to crank up the air conditioning, crank up the music. Enjoy this GT. The storm has not come, thank goodness. So well, we move, It's down south. It's so down south, north. so we moved away from it. But anyways, we had a great time. Thank you for joining us for this video. We can't wait for the future of many GT videos. And just remember that whatever you drive, even if it is not a GT Performance Edition, which I'm so happy we are in, enjoy the ride. Bye. Bye.